run me through your guys for the Penguins, and I'll I'll talk about it with, you know, I'll I'll, I'll do that while you're yours. Doing. So breakout, who's your breakout guy? I'll write it down. Breakout. Uh, I'm gonna go Raquel. Rack, I like it. Best uh, ad. Best ad. That's uh, I guess Ty Smith. Okay. Who else did they add? He hasn't played a game yet, though, bro. Wait, who else did they add? Ty Smith hasn't played yet. Um, uh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I mean, you could say Raquel because we did add him at the end of the year. Yeah, I would. All right, I'm going to go say that's what I have, but I was like, he's been on the team for. Like, oh, Petrie. We added Petrie. Oh, okay. I'd still say Raquel. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, Make or break. Jari. Jari, interesting, interesting. Jari. MVP. I'm gonna go. It's, I feel like it's gotta be Crosby, man. He's playing really. He's playing really well. Player to watch. Um. That's interesting. I ha- what I have is Gensel, but I'm like, I don't know. I just think everybody watches Gensy though. That's a thing. Like, I don't know. I just think that'd be interesting. <laughs> It'd be like kind of fun to watch, I guess. But in the term, in the context of player to watch, I don't know. Oh, you know what? Let's do Crystal Tang now. See how he comes back. Valid. I like that pick. Okay. See how he comes back from, you know, the uh, John. I like that. John, Philly word. That's how you know Solomon's with Philly. All right, guys, uh, don't go anywhere. I'm still going to cover the Penguins. It's going to be very fun. It's going to be a great time. Uh, but we will say goodbye to Solomon here. Thank you, Solomon, Thanks, so much for joining us. We'll definitely have to film. See, now Solomon and I are on spring or on uh, winter break, so we'll probably yeah. be filming a lot. We'll probably be filming a lot. So um, thank you again, man. Um, hope you enjoyed, you know, being on first episode. Yeah. It's going to be great. It's the start of something great, man. Yeah, man. All right, dude. All right. Peace. Good luck, sir. See you boys later. All right. We'll see you, bro. Okay. For those of you who have continued watching, thank you so much. Uh, here we go. So, if you're a Penguins fan, I'm the guy you want to talk to. I'm the guy that you're going to love hearing from. Huge Penguins fan. I like to watch every game. I am, I, I am everything Penguins. Let's get this going. All right, boys. Breakout. Give me oh, – there's a lot of great options here, right? Because Rick Rack's been playing well. Zucker is finally not hurt, right? Zucker is finally not hurt. This is great, you know. Uh, oh, wait, no, he's hurt again. Yeah, <laughs> so right now he's on a week-to-week. So is Petrie. Petrie's on LTIR. Um, but I'm going to say breakout. Yeah, I'll take Zuck. You know, let's mix it up because Ricky's going to be in a lot of them. Uh, and Ricky was also his breakout player, but I'll take Zuck. You know, Zucker has been injured, and we gave up a lot for him. We basically gave up first two first overall first picks. Whoa, first two first round picks for him. Uh, we gave up Kalen Addison and a first round pick. Kalen Addison was going to be that guy, you know, that we could come up from the from you know Wilkes Bear or you know wherever he was going to play, and he was going to be a difference maker. He was going to be a young guy, a great player, a difference maker. So. Um, getting rid of both of those guys was rough, especially for the fact that Zucker was always hurt and wasn't very consistent in the beginning. Yeah, he had that like two goal game. Remember that? That was awesome. But Sidney Crosby is like first game or second game or something, something very recent into his uh, time here. Um, but now he's got 20 points in 27 games. He's really finding his own. I think the teams have been, the lines have been solidified. Uh, if you're a Penguins fan, you probably have understood that, right? So Gensel, um, Gensel, Crosby, and Raquel have been ah, breathtaking. They've been unbelievable. You know, Sidney Crosby, he is my front runner for MVP. Yeah, say that. You know, I'm a Penguins fan, uh, MVP Crosby, right? He is my MVP. And at 35 years old, being able to literally carry this team on his back, yeah, the other guy's been doing phenomenal, but Crosby's still playing that two-way game, that leadership style. He's keeping them in every single game. He has so far been the most clutch player in the entire league that I've seen. I get notifications for every goal scored in the NHL, and his always comes up. Well, I also watch, so I keep track of all the other ones, but when I watch, 
he is the most clutch player I've I've ever gotten the pleasure of watching. So, point is breakout. Sorry, little rant there. If you're a Penguins fan, you're loving this. So, uh, Ricard Raquel, he's my breakout player because he has been. You know, it was a little rough. He had a rough start. You know, he wasn't doing crazy well. He was still finding his way. In all honesty, the play style between the Western Conference and the Eastern Conference is very different. Where he came from, scrap and grind. You know, he wasn't able to showcase his skill as much as he'd like to. There's, you know, there's there, there are guys in the West on on lower level teams like the Ducks, like uh, Trevor Zegers, who do get to showcase their skill. Um, but for the most part, you know lower level Western conference teams are just grindy guys. Excuse me. Um, guys who are just, you know, pedal to the metal, um, just big hitters, big scrappy grind players. They're not always skilled guys. And this guy flew under the radar big time, phenomenal skill player. Oh, and then he got hurt in the, again, the Rangers series, uh, courtesy of, I think it was Jacob Trubo. <sighs> Jacob Trubo. Um, but, yeah, now he's back. He's got 19 points in 29 games. Uh, he'd have more if he wasn't bounced up and down the lineup. He does not fit well with Malkin. We're Penguins fans. We know he wasn't fitting well with Malkin. He plays with Gensel and Crosby like a demon. He's phenomenal with them. They are going, they're going. they probably one of the best lines in the league. They're just incredibly underrated. Um, best add. Now, I'm going to do worst loss as well. Best ads, Ricky for the exact reasons we just talked about. Ricard Raquel is the best ad. Uh, Solomon had the same idea. I know it was very rushed, so we weren't able to talk to him about it as much. But Ricard Raquel has been the best addition. You know, he's really brought that winger aspect that we needed. You know, our best right winger was was Brian Rust. Um, Love Brian Rust, but we need a guy like Raquel if we're going to be making a deep run. We're trying to win with this team. We're trying to take this team to the cup with Crosby and Malkin one more time, maybe two more times, three more times. Malkin and Crosby for 100 years, 100 years Malkin and Crosby, endless thing. Um, but, you know, Ricard Raquel is that right right winger that we really needed, and he's been unbelievable. He's got that creativity that he brings to the East, which is really going to fit in well with, with what the East play style is. Um, biggest loss... Let's take a moment and put some respect on the name Mike Matheson. Mike Matheson last year was our best defenseman. Yes, we have Crystal Tang, but it's it's unbelievable how much we overrate Crystal Tang at some points. When it comes to defense, yeah, he has moments. Yeah, it's great. But Mike Matheson was our best defenseman offensively and defensively last year. You know, Mike Matheson had – I was talking about hardest shots in the league, snapshots. I was talking about – Brian Burns, or, oh, wait, no, Brent Burns. Wow, that was rough. Um, Brent Burns, you know, I was talking about Brent Burns and his snapshot and how phenomenal it is, right? Mike Matheson is a top five snapshot player in the entire league. I, I, I'm being so serious. I watched all the games, watched all 80, 82 games. Uh, I got to see all 32 teams. Could not find a guy besides Brett Burns who has a harder snapshot. Now, they could just have off day, so I will say Matheson's top five snapshots. But that guy had a rocket, like a literal rocket. It was a missile. And if you're a Montreal Canadiens fan, you'll see. He's going to literally break some of your own teammates' legs because this guy cannot hit the net for some reason. If Mike Matheson hit the net, he could probably had 20 goals. Um, he was a phenomenal playmaker. He was a big body. He was one of our best skaters. You know, his wife is a uh, is, is also a very high-level hockey player. They work on skating a lot together. He has a lot of time off the eye or uh, out of the organization and at home to work on skating. He's He's got that technique down. It's beautiful. Uh, he's got incredible IQ. It's been developing. You know, it wasn't great in, um, in Florida. That's because they needed him to play more of a defensive role uh, due to the fact that, you know, Aaron Eckblad was hurt a lot and, you know, he had to take a lot. Of, he had to take a lot of the brunt of it, you know. So, um, Mike Matheson, I miss you, bro. I really do. Uh, and I think the the city doesn't understand how much we actually do miss you. Uh, you were great for us, and yes, I love Petrie. And I think the I think Petrie's been great, but he hasn't been better than Matheson was last year. But the thing is, who came with it? Palin. Paling has been 
that guy that we need on that fourth line. You know, Penguins' fourth line has been one of the best fourth lines in the league four years. You know, we've had um, – who do we have? We had McGinn, Bluger, and Czar. They were statistically – the best line in the entire league, not just fourth line, best line in the entire league, statistically two-way play in the whole league last year and the year before that. Uh, so it we needed that fourth line. We need that fourth line. And Ryan Paling has done nothing but just – he's been phenomenal. He's been an unbelievable addition. I think he could even be a potential best add. Petrie's been great, don't get me wrong, but people underestimate how much we're going to miss Matheson. When it comes to, and also Matheson was younger, a lot younger, a lot, a lot, a lot younger. So, uh, yeah, that's probably the worst loss. Make or break. He had Jari. He's been picking goalies a lot. I feel like because you know, it's, it's understandable. You know, make or break is is going to be your goalie. If your goalie doesn't play well, your team doesn't play well. But my make or break is going to be Malkin. Look, Malkin. A little little fun thing about me. Um, I, I grew up playing football. I was pretty good at it. I, I'd say, you know, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., the kid that plays for Ohio State, he's going to be like a top 10 pick in the NFL in a few years. He was my teammate. We played together growing up. You know, I was on a good team. You know, I played well. Um, a lot of heartbreaking, you know, things happened to me. Uh, playing football, a lot of political things. And I wasn't able to play anymore. Uh, and I really wanted to find a sport where I could thrive, you know, not being the most skilled guy, obviously, since I'm very new to hockey. I, I had already liked the Penguins growing up. Uh, just uh, I don't want to get too much into it, but I would already been an, un, an unofficial Penguins fan since I was like fifth grade or something. Um, so I was just like, you know what? Yeah, I'll pick it up. I, uh, hockey seems cool. I already said I like the Penguins. I have known nothing about the Penguins at all. Barely knew who Sidney Crosby was. And I started watching, and I'm like, this Evgeny Malkin guy stinks. This Malkin guy cannot skate for his life. He cannot skate for anything, you know? And that's what I loved about him. You know, that's what I love about the guy. I love that a guy can be that clumsy and look like Bambi on the ice. He's he's not a very great skater, and neither was I. I was just starting. I, I'm like 11 years behind some of the kids I started playing with. So it was really cool to see a guy like that excel at that level as long as you have creativity. Malkin, throughout his career, has been one of the most creative players in the league because he doesn't have it when it comes to skating. So he has to make up through it creativity, his shooting power. That's what I have. I have a good shot. Um, I have. I, I'd like to think I'm very creative on the ice. Um, he was my inspiration. He was my inspiration. He came from a very, very different background than everybody on the Penguins. You know, he came from Magnitogorsk, Russia. He didn't even speak English when he got here. Took a very Yarmer, Yager-esque type uh, role to get to the Penguins. He, that's what I felt when I walked into hockey locker rooms. You know, I, I, I don't know anything about this. I'm, you know, I don't, I'm not throwing race into it at all. Uh, or saying that, yeah, as a, but I was the only brown kid in like the entire league. And that's fine because my teammates embraced me. It has nothing to do with it, but it's just like, I came from a different background than everybody else. I was very new to the sport. I wasn't a great skater. All I had was creativity, creativity. I could shoot hard. And that's what Gino had. And he was, he was one of the best players in the league when I grew up. So I love the kid. I love the guy. He's an older guy now, but He's my make or break because the guy has been very clumsy as he's gotten older. Love the guys to death. He's the reason I started playing and the reason found inspiration. I have two of his jerseys, but if he keeps making these very risky turnovers, not getting back on defense, it's going to kill the Penguins. And it's going to be a huge regret to the fan base and the people are going to get pissed at him uh, because they just re-signed him after a very controversial should they, shouldn't they. Should they go out and get Trocek who wants to come to the Penguins because he was from Pittsburgh? A lot of ifs, and they took Malkin. Uh, you know, confession, I did win Malkin when I thought he was going to leave. I thought he was done. I sent him a DM, just like a long thing saying, you know, 
hey, thank you for everything. You were an inspiration to me, yada, yada, yada. So I love the guy, but he's really been hurting the team with turnovers. He's been phenomenal offensively. I love him. Gino, you're a point per game right now. Just keep it up, and please, please just don't don't make bad mistakes, please, bro. I love you. Come on. As you can tell, I love the back ones. So, <laughs> sorry, I got to keep this moving. Uh, players to watch. He had Latang. I think that's interesting because Latang had the seizure um, and everything. You know, he's been – it's been a rough ride. You know, I, I'm not going to lie. I'm I'm a big Chris Letang disliker. And in some ways, you know, I love the guy. He's a phenomenal human being. He's a great father, a great teammate, a great friend. On the ice, it frustrates me because he is such – he is one of the best defense – skating defensemen in the entire league. You know, I think there are players that are better skaters in front of him, like, you know, Kale McCarr, Jamie Drysdale. There are slick skaters, Brent Burns maybe. But he is one of the best skating defensemen in the league. And he is one of the most offensively talented defensemen in the league since he could come in. The issue is he's not as good defensively. That's why he doesn't get the credit he deserves. He's had an unbelievable career offensively, but he just needs to pick it up defensively. Love the guy. Player to watch. Yeah. I mean, especially after a stroke, that's the guy you're going to want to keep your eye on and make sure everything's all right with him, you know? So I understand that from Solomon's aspect. Uh, my player to watch for them, boy, as a Penguins fan, there's so many guys we can throw out there. You know, honorable mentions player to watch. I'm going to go with uh, Kapanen. You know, he could be a player to watch. He'll get like a hat trick and then go cold for like eight games. Uh, Jeff Petrie, if he starts coming into his own offensively, he'll be phenomenal. Brock McGinn is just shooting with confidence again. That'll be great. Danton Heining can come in anywhere on the on the entire lineup and and be a stud. He's, he's been slotted one through four this entire, entire year, and he's coming back in with Zucker Hurt. Maybe he does something, maybe he doesn't. He doesn't really fit any of the lines perfectly. That's why he's been scratched, but he still is a great player. He's He was our best, uh, you know, five-on-five five player last year. So it's a lot to watch there. But um, I'm going to say P.O. Oliver Joseph. Now, I was a big disliker of P.O. coming up. You know, I, I do like, you know, hey, you know, uh, Brown hockey player, very similar to me. You know, I, I, I like this guy. And I don't look at it by based off race. You know, he's really earned it in the NHL, though. I didn't think he did at first. He, But the thing is, I think he was just not confident in himself. Now, I'm starting to see what people are talking about. He started off the season kind of rough, you know. Went to Montreal, had that game. He was pretty good. But before that, he was rough. He was pretty, pretty rough. And I think it's just the comfortability getting into this level, getting playing up to this level. I'm starting to see what they were seeing down at and Wilkes-Barre and, you know, wherever else he played. He's unbelievably good slick skating defenseman. He is – he's quite literally like Keandre Miller if Keandre Miller decided to play some more offense. Um, that has nothing to do with race. I'm just saying a taller guy, lankier dude, but left-handed shot. Um, and, and yes, I, I guess it does have a little bit to do with, you know, they're both they're both – we're both black hockey players who come in from, you know, maybe they're not, they're not, I mean, from perspective, from my perspective as well, we're not used to that. You know, I mean, like we're the, we're the only ones. So it's like, you know, um, not going to harp on that too much. Don't want to get into it, but yeah. So P.O. Oliver Joseph, my guy to watch. He's a phenomenal six game defenseman. He's a great player. He's a great, Great guy. He's always got a smile on his face, always got the right attitude, always looking to compete. He's willing to throw his body around, even though he's not the biggest dude out there. He's doing everything in his power to stay in this lineup over Ty Smith right now. And I'm all for it, man. He's doing phenomenal. He, he's, he's been incredible. I really like the guy. Uh, and I think he could be our – he could even be as – I'd go as far to say he could be our future. He could literally be our future when it comes to – um, defense, de defense. I think him and Ty Smith could be our future. That's how good I think P.O. Oliver Joseph could be if they develop him properly. And who else better to develop him than, in my opinion, one of the best coaches in the entire league. I always say the entire league, but Mike Sullivan, you have been snubbed year after year after year after year. It's unbelievable. You're a coach of the year, at least one of those back-to-back -back Stanley Cup runs. Every year you deal with incredible adversity. Last year, nobody gives you the respect you deserve for having uh, 
Latang, Crosby, and Malkin all out for to start the year. You know, people don't give you credit for that. You've been phenomenal. Props to you. If you develop this kid, P.O. Joseph, well, he's going to be your guy to ride or die with. Um, so, yeah, I think P.O. is the guy to look for. I think he's starting to have a breakout year. I think next year will be his solidified year. But right now, he's 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 got his uh, – He's got his second goal in the NHL. You know, he's he's looking a little better. He's looking a little better. He's he's skating well now. Uh, he's on the second power play unit. So, yeah, love him. All right, uh, MVP. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's let's just all take a moment and and understand how good how good Sidney Crosby has been. Just take a moment. I'll, I'll give you a second. All right, Sidney Crosby has been unbelievable. He's 35 years old, and he's got 30, 38 points in 29 games. Yeah, you could say he has Gensel. Yeah, you could say he has Raquel. He had, he made Gensel, and anyone who says otherwise is wrong. He made Gensel into the player he is right now. Gensel is a scrawny kid with a great shot, yes, but on his own, he is not anything what he is with Crosby. Crosby has been... The difference that between Crosby and McDavid is Crosby makes players. Crosby makes everyone around him better. McDavid, although, yes, he gets the assists, he gets all the same stats even better than Crosby. He doesn't make players around him better. Crosby developed Brian Russ. Crosby turned Gensel into the player he is right now. Crosby played with everybody in this lineup and makes them better. Everyone. Everyone from that team, the 2015, 16, uh, 17, all, all those years coming up, Sheary, the only reason Sheary has a job is because of Crosby. Crosby is that guy, all right? And people need to keep putting respect on his name. I'm loving that. People are seeing that now. He is my front runner for MVP of the league because, yes, you got – McDavid putting up McDavid points. Voter fatigue is going to set in, and a guy like this with this kind of a storyline like Crosby is going to get over that every year until he retires, and then, yeah, McDavid will get it probably every other year, whatever. But Because obviously, yes, McDavid is the greatest athlete in the, in, in the world right now. McDavid is the most dominant in his sport compared to any, any other sport, right? Like, basketball, is, there's debates, you know, there, there's, there's Doncic, there's um, there's Embiid emerging right now. There's uh, Giannis. Um, there's there's so many people. And then in NFL, you got like Mahomes. You got Allen. You know Allen. I don't know. But Mahomes, yeah, fine. Mahomes might have set himself apart, but not as much as McDavid has from the number two. You know, there's McDavid. There's like six tiers, and then there's the next guy. So. Yeah, he'll always be up there for MVP, but I think Crosby will be MVP this year if he maintains this progress. He's been phenomenal. Um, and yeah, he had Sid for the same reasons as well. Solomon did. So that was a lot longer. Um, if you're a Penguins fan and you waited till this waited this long to hear the Penguins, I am so happy you did. And I'm hoping you, you enjoyed it as well. Thank you to everybody, you know, who stayed through my Penguins rant and um you know, thank you everyone for listening. All right. Um, it's been a while, you know, I, I got this, got this podcast started up at the beginning of the year. It's been a rough year. It's been a tough year, uh, personal issues, stuff like that. A lot of things going on, but put my intention out there to the world. I want to be the general manager of an NHL team when I grow up and I'm going to be, um, I want to get into this hockey world and I want to make a difference. I want to show people what I got and I really want to live around the sport of hockey. Um, and during COVID, you know, I got to have a lot of time to dedicate towards showing people what I know about hockey and through my TikTok channel, Jacob G 71, go follow. Um, I was able to do that. So, you know, I was able to gain a following, gain a following of people who were entertained and found my content interesting. So, um, yeah, thank you everyone for listening. Um, thank you again to the Devils, the Islanders, and the Flyers for hearing us out on uh, last Tuesday and inviting us out. We really appreciate 
you know, you getting to talk to us and we can't wait to talk to you guys soon. We'll keep all of our listeners updated on what's going on. Um, and yeah, we really hope you enjoyed. If you have any comments or, you know, suggestions, we'd love to hear them. We're going to post on YouTube. Uh, we're going to post some of these clips on TikTok. Please. Any suggestions are appreciated. Um, Thank you so much for listening, guys. This has been an amazing first episode, and it's only going to get better and bigger from here, you know. Um, Yeah. Thank you so much to everyone. This has been phenomenal.